prickle in this room for some reason. Blue <laughs> I'm still reading this unfathomably rich book known as Young Children's Behaviour Fourth Edition and came across an apt term called affluenza. As surprising as it may sound, abusive and neglectful treatment of children can result in unhealthy outcomes for their future. Ah, oh, really? I heard the best way to look after kids was to leave them in a haunted forest to die so you can save on food. Where did you read that? Ah, oh, Ansel and Gretel. The best childhood education booklet around. Teaches scouts, cooking, and the dangers of excessive confection consumption with pictures and simple words so any parent can understand. During these critical development years, snuffing out children's innate capacity for growth can completely throw off their trajectory in life. <laughs> there, now you'll be a child forever. Sure, systems like the Western propaganda model as described by Herman and Chomsky can manipulate all kinds of masses into acting against their own interests. Links describing the Western propaganda model are in the description. But it is our deprivation of educational nutrition in those early days that determines our vulnerability to such systems. A complicated world requires all of our brain's various skills to navigate. If any of them are impaired, such as our emotional or social intelligence, logic or any other corresponding cortex, we are more at risk of mass manipulation, groupthink and other cultish behaviours. Which brings me to another thing mentioned in this chapter of the book, affluenza. This is a term coined in early 1954. The book describes it as the emotional abuses that proliferate around wealthier families, which restrict children from becoming properly functioning human beings. The small section cites the three main problems that affluent parents cause their children. First off, bulldozer parenting, where they remove all obstacles in a child's life, preventing them from building resilience and other useful skills. Then there's pressuring parenting, where the entire child's set purpose on the planet is their success and achievement of goals, rather than on development of their character. Essentially, rather than being judged on the content of the character, they are being judged on the content of their wallets. Me, I'm worth five dollars. Outsourced caring. Rich parents are often raised by nannies due to their busy, career-driven Gen X parents snorting coke from BHP buildings or whatever. Children do need some level of adversity. They also need to learn to fall in love with the process rather than the results. Parents who remove obstacles in a child's life or force them to focus on the results rather than the process run the risk of having a child that is either completely incapable of anything or completely unable to do anything without approval from someone. Both result in people who have a tendency to bring others down. The way children are raised plays a major role in how society functions and I believe how resistant it is to corruption. Although well-raised people can go on to damage social fabrics just as anyone else might, having highly functional morality, logic, empathy and some half-decent f***ing hand-eye coordination, like seriously, I think I got the brain shivers, would be instrumental in repelling against aspects of society that could be damaging, like sophisticated propaganda systems, cults, Collingwood supporters and other society-damaged forms of manipulation. It is fundamental that you do not hit kids with very big sticks for no apparent reason. I would never suggest or imply that I would ever want to do it. If you do, they may become Collingwood fans. Yeah.